has been here before. So, uh, some of the introductory remarks we can dispense with this week. Nevertheless, it's a good time to welcome everybody and for us to reflect about what are we doing? Uh, what's going on? Uh, can we gain some perspective on the, on the big picture? Uh, one of the things about the, the scriptures, the Bible, is it's a progressive revelation. In other words, the people who lived in the time of Moses, they didn't even have the Torah. And then, you, you know, you get to, uh, you get to David and, uh, and Solomon and, and uh, the judges, etc. And, you know, they didn't have, they, they had the Torah, but that's all they had. Now, later, people had the Psalms as a way of expression and Proverbs from Solomon. And uh, more understanding came. And so those, the subsequent scriptures of the prophets and the minor prophets and the writings, they were explanatory of what was already known as Holy Writ. So as history has moved along, God has revealed more and more uh, about the mysteries that have preceded. So you say, well, it took, 15, it took 1,500 years, actually 2,000 from the time of Abram, uh, through, through the times of the, of the New Covenant. Now, there was a period of about 400 years. I'm going to keep doing this until more people arrive. <laughs> it may be a while. Uh, so there was a period of about 400 years where there were no new scriptures. Okay, we have Malachi, and uh, he says, now you want to look forward to the coming of the Messiah. But there was 400 years where there was nothing new. Uh, so there were writings by the rabbis in the uh, to, to comment and to explain the things of the Old Testament, the Tanakh. So that's how you wind up with the Mishnah and the Talmud and the, the Gomorrah, the Zohar, all of these rabbinical writings, all making commentary. The problem was, was though, that was all human wisdom. Some of it was interesting and enlightening from a human point of view, largely intellectual and trying to deduce things out of the scriptures, but it was not, it was not really inspired. So there's nourishment in it, but then again, <laughs> excuse my saying that there's nourishment in sewage too. I mean, you know, what, what else am I taking in? So finally, the best commentary of all times was the new covenant to explain the, uh, the Old Testament. Now, uh, we have we have different groupings. You know, in the beginning, there was there was the uh, uh, there was a big distinction. You had the 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 priests, the Kohanim, the descendants of Aaron, and uh, they were part of the tribe of Levi. But there was a distinction between whether you were part of the 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 uh, the high priesthood or you were just a regular priest. And then there was a further distinction whether you were part of the Israelites, kind of like the hoi polloi, okay? But these were major distinctions, major, very much recognized, etc. And then there was a big distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles, were you of Israel or were you from the nations? And, but these distinctions have blurred a lot over time. Now we have the distinction between Christianity and Judaism. And that took a few hundred years for that distinction to come out. Uh, and where is it all going? God's taking a sweet old time, taking thousands of years to create these distinctions, to make commentary. If it was all shown in one generation, how would we know that it was really God-inspired? So where is all this going? 1 Corinthians 11.19 says, that for the reason there are heresies among you is so God can show of whom he's approved. That means that when you have two ideas, two different ways of thinking, an argument, so to speak, that represents an opportunity for God to show his opinion, largely through circumstances, of which side he's on. The higher idea will win out. It may take a while. That's 
we should be careful about getting into an argument with somebody uh, because in the end, somebody's going to move up a notch and somebody's going to move down a notch. Whether we're talking about a division, a heresy, uh, uh, or just a dissension between people. Now, now we have major distinctions. We have Christianity and we have Judaism, but we can see how all that's fusing together, uh, especially through the Messianic congregations. I mean, it, in my view, Ezekiel 30, 39, 28 says that I'll leave none of, none of them in the countries anymore. At some point in history, that prophecy will look back and will say, see that it was true, that anybody who was still left being a Jew will be in the land of Israel, which will have expanded borders. Now, uh, now that's coming. And the Messianic congregations, it is my expectations, will still exist. They'll all be run by Gentiles. The Jews will be back in the land. But there's a fusing right now of these different groupings. And now let's extrapolate even further into the future. What's likely to be? We have, we have groupings uh, of uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and Islam. Hmm? That scripture, 1 Corinthians 11:19 is still in effect. It's a law of spiritual physics. It's always in effect. That when you have two different ideas, it is an opportunity, and God will. He will show of whom he's approved so that, so that the sound among you may come to the fore. Okay? So, which idea is the correct one? Is it Hinduism? Is it Buddhism? Is it Islam? Is it something else? God cannot fail on that promise to show and to demonstrate, largely through circumstances, what his view is. So in the long run of things, in the long run of things, those other major religions are going to go out of existence. They will be discredited. Big war may do that. But uh, what with modern communications... Already, I just don't know how people who, let's say, subscribe to Hinduism that have see little monsters all over the place, a thousand gods, you know, I just don't know that people really are sold out to that idea. And uh, over time, these distinctions are going to arrest themselves. And there will be, eventually, and God's taking his sweet old time about it, there will be one faith on earth. God will prevail. And we're part of that. We are kind of an insertion into the historical progressive drama whereby the age-old misunderstanding between Jews and Christians is being eliminated. Will it take time? Well, it's already taken 50 years. What will be in another 50 years? We're in the middle of it. We're part of that reconciliation it's happening. All right, I've more than I kind of over explained. So it's time to uh, ask the uh, 